Uh, all right. Why don't we jump into our next thing that we're supposed to do? Dan, help me. Topic number two. Luke, you want to pick it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Index what, finger or pinky? <laughs> <laughs> I asked if you want to pick it. Why? Oh, really? Really, Luke? It's a little early on the show to go there. Twitch is still watching. <laughs> they're sensitive virgin eyes. They're not, they're not, they haven't been sent to bed yet. Um, <laughs> let's do Yuzu. I right. think let's yeah. do Yuzu. Yeah, yeah. Makers of Yuzu shut down emulators, telemetry data, worries, and other shockwaves through the emulation community. A week after Nintendo, just a week. This is like the craziest part to me. Yeah. A week after Nintendo filed a lawsuit against Tropic Haze LLC, the makers of Yuzu Switch emulation software, Tropic Haze has agreed to settle the case by paying Nintendo $2.4 million and ceasing distribution of the emulator. Man, that happened fast. Like That was lightning fast. There is no way that this wasn't all kind of going on behind the scenes yeah. at that point. Yeah. Yuzu, uh, some observers have speculated that the devs may have settled to avoid discovery, which may have verified claims that the Yuzu team dumped and shared games between themselves or helped get Switch games uh, uh, up and running on Yuzu before their official launch date. Yuzu apparently had telemetry that logged a lot of information, and now that all devices and hard drives owned by the LLC are now in the hands of Nintendo, leading to fears that they may take further action against the emulator's user base. Oh boy. oh boy why did that telemetry data need to get logged um as an additional result of the lawsuit tropic haze has also discontinued support of the 3ds emulator citra the discussion has caused a wave of chaos decision this, yeah there we go uh the decision has caused a wave of chaos in the emulation community the official discord channel of yuzu's competitor Ryujinx, um, had Ryujinx. To, Ryujinx, okay, had, had to temporarily stop accepting inv invites in response to the influx of users from the Yuzu Discord server. A popular Discord server for the Steam Deck, uh, for the time being at least, shut down its entire emulation channel to prevent potential legal repercussions. The developer of popular Nintendo DS emulator, Drastic, uh, stopped charging for the software on the Google Play Store and intends to pull it down and open its source, a decision made more urgent by the Uzu, Yuzu settlement. Our discussion ah. question is, what will the results of this decision be, and should emulator users and developers be concerned? I mean... I we are not legal experts no. when it comes to emulation or realistically anything. anything. Yep. 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 I was going there. I was yep, going there. Yep, so yep. take all of this as not legal advice. These are, yeah. But it's been pretty clear for a long time that emulation is very, very murky legally. Yes. It's heavily dependent on the region that you're in, on the region that you are defending yourself Everyone against. Everyone likes to thump that emulation is legal, but it's like... Some aspects of that Pretty are gray. somewhat proven out. Some aspects of that are not as proven out. And yeah. as we've seen recently, like looking at, uh, in particular, a high profile, longstanding decision that was overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court somewhat recently, just because something has mm. legal precedent for it doesn't necessarily mean that that can never be overturned if there is sufficient pressure on the legal system uh, or if there is a new argument that can be presented in order to get it changed. I do think that there are probably regions where it is unlikely that, a, that an emulation developer would be um, at as much risk, but it is very clear that if especially you pursue any kind of monetary gain yes. through the development and distribution of any yes. kind of copyrighted material, you are painting a target on your back and big one. you are going to be in trouble. I think that what uh, drastic is doing is probably a pretty smart defensive play open sourcing it and sort of trying to trying to make the target broader and less easy to go after if it's just an, a community of open source developers compared to uh, an organization that is clearly making a significant amount of money. I mean, if you have $2.4 million to pay as a settlement, what I would assume is that that's somewhere near everything they had. 
Um, yeah. And that's probably the negotiation that has taken place over presumably the weeks or months that have led up to this announcement and then the subsequent announcement of the settlement. I bet you Nintendo wanted it to be fast because yeah, probably. it shows that it's scary. How fast it happened is scary. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I pretty much guarantee you a pretty significant part, portion of this was wanting to instill fear. Oh, they yeah. don't want people to do this. So they, they, they want to make an example. The thing that sort of baffles me right now is that Nintendo thinks that that will be successful. That people will maybe stop emulating games oh, and emulating their systems. Totally will from a, from a paid perspective. I think we're going to see a somewhat universal death of paid emulation. I don't think so. I think we might see that in some places. I mean, you're I think you're you're probably not considering what's going on in places like China where you can buy easily readily available yeah. systems that are completely jammed packed full of emulators and pirated ROMs. So more in like somewhat legal havens. Yeah. yeah. And and that's the kind of thing where that I mean, we've seen time and time again um, just basically since the inception of the internet, yeah. you can't stomp out anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you'll never completely get it. There's no. always somewhere it can hide. Whether it's whether it's you know, uh, you know online black marketplaces or whether it's we saw uh, this with WoW private servers back in the day before they made WoW Classic. They they would just bounce around to data centers. Yep. Oh, that one gets whacked. Another one comes up. Yep. It's probably a new group of people. Whatever. They're still going to accept payments. They got to pay for servers. I mean, like, look, we we discussed going. this a little while ago. This actually cropped <laughs> up on the subreddit. It. People were asking, well, why, why was Linus all talking about the Pirate Bay? Like, don't use the Pirate Bay. Um, and it's because the ownership has changed multiple times. Yeah. And there's... It's not... It's legitimately not what it used to be. It is actually not what it used to be yeah. and not run by the folks that used to run it. But what I can say about it is it's still there. I mean, the number of times that the Pirate Bay and the, the power of the entities who have tried to take down the Pirate Bay, uh, the number of times they've shut it down only for it to crop back up again yeah. is mind-boggling, um, especially when you consider the, the, the limited financial resources of a, a website. Um, and, you know, they definitely ran ads that we know from experience have higher CPMs on them, you know, advertisers who won't get, you know, more legitimate sites to display their stuff. Um, to be clear, we haven't actually run them. We've just seen offers, but uh, yeah. still, still it's, it's a, it's finite resources and you're going up against entities that have effectively infinite resources like the Motion Picture Association of America or the, uh, uh, what's the RAA recording industry, Artists Association or something like that. I, I can't remember what RAAA stands yeah, for, yeah. but these like gigantic American um, media organizations. Recording Industry Association of America. Thank you. Um, but yeah, big deal. Really big deal. Yeah, I'm 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 worried because I I'm I'm at the point I'm at a point in my life now where I really do play pay for the games I play. I, I don't Me too. legitimately do not remember the last time I pirated a game. I would have been still living at my parents' house, I think. Mm, maybe not. I, I don't know either. No, probably not. Call of Duty 2. Okay, let's look at Call of Duty 2. Wait, no, no, I didn't. I didn't pirate Call of Duty 2 because by then I was working at NCIX and um, I got codes that um even if you did that was 2005 yeah no hold on a second was it cod 2 19 years yeah anyway the point is it's been a very very long time long time basically since steam got good i i c could not afford to buy the games at all it didn't there was there was no like it wasn't gonna make a difference and i was pirating games and then i could afford to buy games and i bought games so as someone who has played Nintendo games on an emulator and owns every game that I played. I mean, look, I'm not going to pretend that I went through the rigmarole of ripping my games. Yeah. And ripping my BIOS. Not going to pretend that. You have a... a, a I've got the cart. Got a cart, yeah. Got the cart. But I don't want to play on the Switch. It fucking sucks. 
And so that's, honestly, that's my problem with all of this. I'm not even looking at it like, but my free games. Like, it's not about that. It's about, I want to I wanna play my games at 60 f***ing frames per second. That's Mudahar's take as well. You guys have the same... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. He's just like, I want it to be better. <laughs> yeah. And if Nintendo... If, I even gave them... I gave them my f***ing money. Once for the Switch, second time for the Switch OLED. Give me... And the game. Give me a Switch 2 or a Switch Pro. I saw, I saw a rumor... I don't know what source it was from. I have no idea the credibility, but I, I saw a rumor that kind of lines up with other rumors about the upcoming Switch replacement that it's based on, I want to say, Turing. It's already going to be old. Yeah. Um, where, where they were basically saying, yeah, the hardware has pretty much been done for like two years, which kind of makes sense. From a, from a development standpoint, like if Nintendo's like, look, we don't want to rush this. We want to have dev kits that are basically finished hardware so that the games at launch have years to be developed and are awesome. Or what I, like, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, but like... Yeah, but I, it's like a seven... It's a seven-year-old console at this point. Mobile. And it sucked when it came out. Yeah. Just give me something. It was weak at launch. Yeah. <laughs> like NVIDIA. Uh. I remember NVIDIA coming to the office at NCIX and pitching. Do you remember NVIDIA's super phones? Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that. Super phones, NVIDIA. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can find any materials. Oh, my God. From super phones to super computers. What is this? What year is this from? Uh, bu -bu -bu, NVIDIA fact sheet, uh, 1900, million Tegras shipped. What am I even, what am I even looking at here? This is like obviously ancient collateral. Uh, 2011, let's go. Okay, so NVIDIA had this super phones initiative around their Tegra chips. And the idea was that they were going to power, you know, the computer, the PC, um, or sorry, they were going to power the data center, uh, your pocket, and everything in between. And um, Teg Tegra kind of sucked. Like on the GPU side of things, it was it was good, it was solid. Uh, but the the CPU was not competitive at the time, and Nvidia wasn't able to iterate on it fast enough and get enough design wins to put the R and D back into it to to get the cycle going. It just never it never snowballed. And a few years later, out came the Nintendo Switch with this, like, kind of crappy, when it was launched, which was years prior, mobile chip in it. And it's like, oh, please. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, this sucks. This sucks because uh, my issue is not paying for games. My issue is wanting the games that I play to be the best possible experience and Nintendo having no interest in that whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, even just the fact that your, that your save games are locked to the Switch with no way to export them and the only way to back them up being a monthly subscription. I've said it once. I'll say it again. F*** off Nintendo with that bullshit. I'm not into it. Why do I keep giving them money? Because <laughs> unfortunately they make good games. <laughs> yeah. They do though. Yeah. They really do. And I, you know, looking at, looking at Sony's move, I'm, I'm worried about the console future. Oh yeah. Microsoft has already telegraphed that they are just utterly disinterested in the hardware side of the business. They want to be a, a Netflix for games. It, it's, it's all, it's all, I always forget what it's called now. Project X cloud, whatever it's actually called. What, 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 what is the Xbox streaming service called? Uh, Xbox gold or something. Any, any, anyway, uh, it's all about, um, <clears throat> Xbox cloud gaming. Really? Yeah. It's all, it's all about uh, Xbox game streaming. Is that what it's called now? It's called something. It's all about it's all about this their streaming service, and it's all about uh, Game Pass. The website at this says point. cloud gaming. Sure, Xbox Cloud Gaming. Uh, so it's all about streaming. It's all about Game Pass. It's all about leveraging their data center expertise to become like a game gaming company. 
but not necessarily just sell consoles yeah. at you know, at you know <clears throat> at cost or or at a loss. Um, and seeing how heavily they've promoted the Xbox, I mean, in terms of price, like there were there were holiday deals last year that were very very aggressive on the Series X and the Series S. Um, and seeing how they've just kind of evidently thrown in the towel on sort of making money on the hardware and they've invested everything into buying up developers. It seems pretty clear to me that Microsoft's interest in the hardware side of things is fading, which I think puts some weight behind what Microsoft said in their defense of Sony's accusations that they were buying up these IPs to make them Xbox exclusive. I think I'm at the point now where I kind of believe them that those games will come to PlayStation because they're looking at the cost of developing these mega triple A or uh, quadruple, quadruple A, A games? games, the future of gaming and going, look, if we don't target <sighs> the largest possible install base, we're taking our own foot and basically turning it into Swiss cheese with a gun, right? So I, th I think I kind of buy it now. But here's the thing. Sony seems to be way faster, way more suddenly, I guess, than I anticipated coming around to the same thing. What even... Uh, I, I was talking last week, I think, about the, the console tier list video that we have coming, where we were looking at the PS5 going, you know, what are the exclusives that, you know, cement this console as, uh, as, as you know iconic you know a console for the ages because that was one of our definitions is like what were the games that defined or the experiences that defined this console and if all of its best games are going to make their way to pc or heaven forbid uh, you know xbox or nintendo switch 2 or whatever the case may be it's kind of hard to defend the playstation 5 as a piece of hardware that need that, that needed to exist at any point and so looking at both microsoft and sony headed the Sega route, hopefully not with the same level of disastrousness, um, but heading the Sega route of being more of, a, more of a software company than an actual hardware company, is it possible or, or even probable that Nintendo <laughs> is the last one oh. standing? Yeah, I, th I think that'll be how it goes. I don't know if it'll be soon necessarily. I feel like PlayStation is going to hold out for a long time. I don't think we're actually that close to PlayStation being done with consoles. Although I like almost feel like it might be better for us. What if it if isn't? They do, if they do stop making consoles. Why? Oh, well, because <clears throat> you would need some type of host device at home. Yeah. Better for us if they stop making consoles? I yeah. don't know. I don't know about As that. As PC people. Because it almost feels like some of the most interesting games are the ones where they... It, like it's it's like you've got this positive feedback loop where you you make money selling consoles and you dump that into games then you make money selling the games and then you dump that back into the console and it's like it's a, it's a it's a self-reinforcing it's an ecosystem business model slash like there's through the through the hardware, the game and the subscription services. It throws a lot of money into a pot that at some point, if they want that, if they want that machine to keep turning, has to go into developing great games. And it feels like if they just become software companies, well, they're going to have all the same challenges that the entire rest of the games industry does where they just need to count on absolutely crushing it with software sales every single time and then funding it unless they want to turn unless we want every game to just be a game as a service <laughs> and even those even those seem really risky these days i have this is going to sound very off topic at sure. first, but i uh starting next week we're filming a bunch of things with me for float plane because apparently we're doing like some content with me. I don't know. Um, I'm cooking that chicken, finally. Uh, <laughs> apparently, that'll be probably a very <laughs> and boring And chicken's video. not the only animal he's going to be showing you how to cook. Wow. Oh, boy. Uh, if people know the context, that's rough. <laughs> it's okay. Um, your mom's probably not watching. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, one of them's going to be Starfield Review. <coughs> 
I'm not going to talk about Starfield at all. My plan is to entirely talk about the death of like the gaming industry that we grew up with. Because like Bethesda is a rotting carcass as of right now. Blizzard's like dead. Activision's like dead. Ubisoft is like dead. EA's like dead. Like all the biggest. In names fairness, in gaming. we always kind of hated EA. Yeah, but they used to release bangers. It was annoying because we didn't like the company, but like they released good stuff. Old school Need for Speed was sick. Okay, that's fair. Old, for, old school Need for Speed was like actually an amazing game. All right, fair. They I'll, they had other stuff that was really good. As I'll well. allow it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and, and then like the yeah the Atari thing. I saw people talking about this online. They're like this pattern started with Atari. And we're just seeing the second stage of it now. The first stage was Atari becoming, you know, big and lethargic and failing and the the good people from it quitting and forming Activision. And now Activision is big and lethargic and boring. And now people are leaving Activision. Studios are leaving Activision. Key people are leaving Activision. And they're going off and building things, making their own little companies. And we're seeing like the big slam Omega hits over the last little while. Uh, Elden Ring, Baldur's Gate 3, Helldivers 2. Th- these, none of these are from the studios you're expecting them to be from. You know? Speaking of which, uh, did you get a chance to try out Stormgate from Frost Giant Studios yet? No, I haven't played it. Okay. All right. I'm excited too, though. I didn't pay enough attention. I think they did like a playtest weekend and I didn't play that weekend. Yeah, these are some ex, ex Blizzard devs uh, who are making what's uh, supposed to be what they're trying to turn into kind of a spiritual successor to Warcraft 3, Starcraft 2, which are IPs that just. Uh, Star, Starcraft in particular just feels like it's rotting. Oh, yeah. Like just do anything with that. No, no. Here's another Diablo gotcha game. I, th- I think pretty much everything Blizzard has is rotting right now, if I'm being completely honest. I mean, Diablo seems to be printing money. Is it? I think so. The mobile game. Yeah, exactly. The desktop game. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, but I mean, mobile. I mean, when Microsoft completed the acquisition, uh, the fa- okay, here, let, let me back it up. The fact that King is even in the name of Activision Blizzard King is just... Yeah. Like it's not seriously? like those are the only gaming companies that they have either, which is interesting to me. No, but the fact that King is like it's up there in the name of the company yeah. was mind blowing to me. And then, and then two, the the revenue share that King has of the entire of the entire company oh, it's crazy. It was just. Yeah, and when you look at the utterly revenue, mind destroying. When you to look me. at the revenue of all the like game series and titles that we like care about because we grew up with them they like all suck (laughs) it's like oh okay i guess i understand why they're dying but like i think there's also a reason david david told me the latest final fantasy is really good yeah this is so this is in my notes is that square enix is like one of the only ones that's held on like uh, almost everyone else has totally failed and square enix had some dips but they've recovered every time yeah they've They've made it out stuff yeah, but they've also existed for like ever, so they're going to do some dumb stuff. And pretty much every time that they do, like with their launch of their MMO, the original launch of the Final Fantasy MMO was terrible. But then they were like, you Man, know they what? they really turned that around. We're going to make it good. And they like destroyed the whole first thing that they had. If I remember correctly, they like canceled the entire thing, refunded everybody, rebuilt it, came back, and then had this slow, successful burn over time, and now it's beloved. It's like, okay. All right. Diablo sure. Immortal has stabilized at anywhere from about uh, five to seven million dollars a month. That's ridiculous. So, so Diablo Immortal is generating on a recurring basis somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 million dollars a year. Um, and that's, and that's, like well into its life cycle here. This is from Statista. And you take these numbers with the grain of salt that they need to be taken with. Um, I, I don't know exactly where these ones came from, but I, I, these, this seems somewhat believable that it did, you know, tens of millions of dollars per month in the first couple of months. So this game is, is so far beyond its ROI point um, and is now into gravy territory. Yeah. With that said... 
games as a service don't have quite the traditional, okay, we hit the ROI point. Now everything is just gravy uh, that we, that you used to because the development is ongoing, but there's no way that the development is costing them five to $6 million a month. A lot of that is absolutely, absolutely gravy. Um, I was, I forget who I was talking to about this, but um, it is pretty funny to me how clearly NVIDIA seems to see the future and how much of their development seems to be going into making your old games fun to play again. If you, if you look I don't know. at the big picture, <laughs> why does RTX Remix exist? It's not like there's any shortage of new games to play. So why would anybody need to go back and play Morrowind? But like in 8K with ray traced lighting people love nostalgia stuff um but that's part that's, of it. that's gonna be i i don't think it's because games are getting worse i i actually have a different opinion on this I, no 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 no. i'm not saying it's because games are okay. getting worse okay. necessarily okay. what i'm saying is that they are recognizing that the old model of here comes a blockbuster game that everyone is going to play. God. Every gamer is going to need, or they're just going to get left behind by their gaming crew, is dead. So they can't count on that uh, to sell GPUs that anymore. Because, like, I, I think the two you things... You can't just point at Baldur's Gate 3 oh, and, yeah, say, okay. and say that that now, see, proves the thing. The, or whatever. The It's one now, game, Luke. The problem now is that I have two. Sure, Dark Souls. Helldivers. Helldivers is killing it. Okay. Killing is is it. Helldivers going to sell GPUs? Uh, Let's have a look at the Helldivers 2 system requirements, shall we? Yeah, I don't think those are super high. So you need a Core i7 4790K. Hey, man. And a GTX 1050 Ti. <laughs> I don't think you'll necessarily enjoy your experience with that. So my, so my, but my point, though, was that NVIDIA can't count on these AAA games. Pushing NVIDIA sales. That everyone's going to buy to make it so that you have to buy an RTX, you know, 6969 GT Ti, la whatever. Last Epoch and Pal World are not going to help me. Counter lines. They really are. <laughs> they are really not. So Nvidia are not, is. Those are not it. So Nvidia is investing heavily. These are these are not cheap <clears throat> efforts. Nvidia is investing heavily in tools to make your old ugly games kill your current GPU. Yeah. And, and not in just like a like a meaningless stupid way in a some meaning of those shots of morrowind are actually insane in a meaningful i would enjoy this game more oh yeah playing it this way oh yeah kind of way and it's just i don't know it's i don't remember how we made it onto this topic of conversation me neither but it, it's like it's it. it's clear that they've identified that the industry that they grew up in no longer exists yeah fair enough I just, I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a life and death cycle. I think we're seeing new companies rise up. I think we're seeing creative ideas come out. Uh, like a, a lot of people are looking at Helldivers and be like, why isn't this Halo? Like, where is Halo? Halo Infinite took so long to develop and is trash. Like what? I, I like it. Sort of. Oh, I like things about it. Yeah. It's the game I play if I'm just like, I'm going to play a game for an hour. I've given them zero dollars for it, though, so I'm definitely part of the problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait, no, no, I bought the campaign. I bought oh, it and then didn't play it. Yeah, it's not so I, good. I guess I contributed. I actually, like, didn't like it. Yeah, well, you played it without me, you asshole. I'll still play it with you if you want. Uh, what? It, yeah, it's like it's like if you're it's like if you're if you're if your girlfriend like goes and watches the movie that you were gonna watch together, and then you're like, "Yo, WTF?" Well, and they're like, like "Well, I'll watch it again, but time. it sucked." You never have any time. I'll watch it again, but it sucked. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna drag you through this experience you oh, didn't I'll, even I'll enjoy again. I'll happily complain about it. <laughs> yeah, because that's gonna make it more fun for me. It might. It might be the most fun part. What a dick. <laughs> Oh man, um, but like it's, it's I don't know we're, we're, we're looking at this stuff and just trying to like where where are these old companies you're looking at these games that are killing you're looking at the things that the community is asking for they're just not making them um, and it, it's frustrating you, you hear stories about like how people at at 343 have effectively pitched 
almost exactly what Helldivers is. Because like if you think about it, Halo already has their ODST hell jumpers. Like they literally have this thing. It exists in their universe. You could make a game around it. Um, uh, and they just didn't. So, I don't know. Capcom is another company that's been doing good games. I agree. Isn't Capcom Japanese again? Yep. Yep. So there's a bit of a theme going on there. Um, but they, And they also did this thing, though, in my opinion. Yeah, Capcom's had some dogs. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're recently on a rise, for sure. But they, they were definitely mostly forgotten about for a little while there. All right. Dan, what's next? What about Valve? They, like, don't make games anymore. Yeah, what, but what, a, what about Valve? Hey, we made CS2 and pissed everybody off. I mean, did they... I mean, what even is CS2? Is CS2 a game? <laughs> Define game. It's kind of hard to tell at this point. I feel like they just, like, Sport. didn't want to maintain... Uh, go anymore. Like, d seriously, define game. It's Counter-Strike, but sure. the smokes are cool. Okay. They're pretty cool. You can splish splash in the water. That's pretty cool. Yeah, see, people are... Know, know what games is chores, smoke is cool. See, this is... this the, the, guys, the smoke this is, is pretty cool. Yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I, <laughs> I, I, no, I'm doing this. I'm actually... I'm doing this. Okay, here we go. Dictionary.com. What is your phone doing? What's that? Charging. Oh. Yep. Why does it have red light? Uh, because be nuts. it has a cool, uh, it has a cool multicolored light that you can have it do different lights for different yeah, that things. Is such an ancient feature. Yeah, I know that everyone abandoned. Yeah, well, it's cool. <laughs> the Note Nine is it's the phone that has the all the things. Um, hold on, actually, let me double check. I think it has that. I've I've never actually tried to configure it. Um, RGB uh, notification light. I, th I think it has one. Light colors mean. I'd be so yeah, happy yeah, if they released another has that. portal game. Yeah, it has that. Okay, so the definition of a game. Uh, noun. Wait, what? Portal 2 was released in 2011, my dudes. Uh, Stop reminding me about the passage of time. An amusement, an amusement or pastime. So, what does CS2... What does CS2 anything that any way... Any things versus CSGO. I, the smokes are pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so it's an amusement. I can, I can look at the smokes. Okay, CS2 is a game. I can look at the smoke, and then I can throw a frag nade, and then I can go, oh, it all went away, I and just then it mean, comes back. I guess what I'm trying to say Amazing. is I, I don't think they developed a game with CS2 because the game already existed. It's basically like it's basically like if you electronify... New buy menu, yeah. If you, That's a big one. No, they made a market. They made a store. <laughs> it's like if you take chess, okay, and you create a marketplace for different pieces that you can put on the board. Different different board styles. And you make the board look really pretty. Nice. Write this down. Write this down. Play in. You have write this down. You haven't made chess. Chess is the game. You didn't make it. You accessorized you it. You know what would be sick? Oh, oh what my now? goodness. Okay, Apple Vision Pro app. It's a chess app, but you can play. It like puts you at a table at chess events. So you can like you can like Magnus Carlson can be beating somebody up right next to you and you are playing someone at your table. And like when Magnus Carlson does his thing where he's like bored cuz he's destroying and he just looks at other people's games and evaluates them cuz he's waiting for the other opponent to finally do something, uh, he can like look at your game. And that could be the built-in game evaluation. Sick. Okay, I uh, really think that that is a much worse idea than where I thought you were going with this. <laughs> I thought you were just, I thought where you were going was just, you know, uh, developing a, 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 an exciting, remember, oh, do you remember Battle Chess? I actually, I, I, I look this up every once in a while. I want a campaign-based chess game, and it, they just don't exist, as far as I can tell. Battle Chess is sick. What is this? This is battle chess, obviously. Oh my. What? He picked up. Oh, he has no arms. <laughs> it's, oh. all, it's only a, a flesh wound, though. Yeah, it's the, it's the flesh wound meme. Yes. Oh no. What happens now? Oh! Okay. It's battle chess. What is man. that? Don't worry about it. It's battle chess. It's a rook. 
What? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Oh my. Bishop, man. They got they got god powers. Anyway. Are those queens? Uh yes. Wow. You can tell from the uh <clears throat> yep. queenly um Yeah. Oh, the rooks are epic. <laughs> yeah, they're <Just> rock <laughs> monsters. <laughs> But yeah, I, I want. I, I would love to have like a. Wait, people. FPS chess. What? Is this a thing? What's FPS chess? Anyway, what I was going to say was basically you create like a like a chess with you know microtransactions essentially, so you can buy like skins yeah. skins for your chess. FPS chess. Wait, what the heck? This is amazing. Oh my god! Of course, <laughs> this is a thing. Here we go. What you can fly and stuff. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. What is this? What am I? What am I? Just, what am I looking just at? Just wait for it. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. Headshot. Headshot. And then wait. Rocket jump. And then they're flying. What? What's happening? So right then. Now? Okay. Wins. So when you fight for a for a space, King wins. You Ooh. can not win necessarily. Maybe I have no idea. I don't want this. I just want a campaign. Is that a suppressed sniper? Wow. Rook wins. A little over the top. Okay. Well, that's something that exists. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Very positive reviews. Uh, came out in July of 2022. I don't want. I don't want. I don't. I don't want 5D chess with multiverses and time travel. That's that's cool. That's neat. That's interesting. I just want a campaign. Chess MMO. <laughs> I, th I think that's just chess.com. <laughs> I think that's legitimately chess.com. Google, on Um I know what on is. 